Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Cole here with Classic Mini DIY and today's episode is all about cutting this throttle body up so that it fits on this supercharger right behind me. So stay tuned. Now, like I said, we are going to be cutting up this brand new EFI from Holly. I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Before we do, I am going to show you guys around this whole throttle body system, how it works. Obviously, it is a fully fuel injected system. Um, so it's a whole new concept for you know my Mini and for uh, the whole Mini setup, really. Most of the Minis that you see on the road these days are carbureted, although the Mini was sold as an EFI setup a little bit later in its production. Now, before we get into this though, you guys might notice something that's a little bit different. My face might be looking a little bit more crisp. This throttle body might look a little bit more crisp. And that's because this video is in 4K. That's right, everybody. Classic Mini DIY is now officially getting filmed in 4K from now on. Now, like I said, we're gonna be getting to this EFI today, um, and we have to do some special modifications to this so that it fits properly underneath the hood of the car um, and up against the supercharger. So if you could step over into my office and I will go into this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so to start off, what we're looking at here is our new EFI system. Now this is a throttle body. There's lots of different kinds of fuel injected systems. The one that I'm using is more of a full bundle kit, so to speak. Um, and what I mean when I say that is that normally with an EFI, you have a throttle position sensor, you have all these different sensors, your fuel uh, pump and regulator, all that separate. Um, your injector setup might have two individual injectors, might have you know any assortment, any number of injectors. Um, the Holly system was actually made for a muscle car. So this is a carburetor replacement and normally it sits like this. So it's a downdraft carburetor, meaning air comes in through the top and out through the bottom. Now in my case, I'm gonna be flipping this. So it's gonna sit like this up against the supercharger. So let's pull the supercharger over here. Now you can see I've got my supercharger blocked off and this would be the side of the supercharger that would be on the side with your brake and clutch master cylinders if you're in a right-hand drive car. And the way that this is gonna work is it's gonna sit just like this on the side of the supercharger. Now, Stuart makes a kit for this. So if you're in the UK and you're you know, not like me where I'm in the US and I have this throttle body pretty easily accessible to me, um, he will order these and modify them for these specific superchargers to fit and work the way that they need to. For me, it saved me a little bit of money to be able to buy this here myself. And I have to do some modifications to this, um, which he would normally do if you bought a kit from him, for example. One thing is we actually need a spacer to sit in right here so that uh, this throttle body is spaced off. And so these fuel feed lines don't intercept the actual intake manifold down here. So with a project like this, obviously there's just a few modifications that are required. So back to this EFI here. Now you're, what you're gonna see inside this EFI, now I don't know if you can see it in there, but instead of having individual injectors on this uh, throttle system, you actually have small holes that go all the way around the opening of your throttle system. And those small openings act as your injectors. They inject right into the throttle body. This fuel, the fuel air mixture goes through your supercharger and down into the engine. Other forms of fuel injection will have individual injectors that might slide into the cylinders, it might slide into the throttle body, it might even slide into um, the intake manifold at some point. There's all sorts of different configurations, but in this case, it's all in internalized here. And the cool part about this is this also has the ECU built right into it. So I don't have to have a run a separate ECU and uh, it's kind of a plug and play system, so to speak. But you might be curious, what, what exactly needs to be modified here? Well, first off, this big flange right here is uh, a little bit too big. It intercepts the hood on the Mini um, because this is sitting up like this when it's in the car. So what we need to do is cut this top portion of this flange off so it sits true with the top of the EFI here. Um, that is step one. Step two is taking this entire throttle linkage off. So we have to remove this little tab here 
this whole throttle linkage is gonna come off and then it gets replaced with the bespoke one that uh, Stuart includes in the kit. So for this job, what you're gonna need is a Dremel, a cutting tool. Um, you're gonna need something to grind down the metal as well. So I've got a few different attachments for my Dremel right now. Um, and we're gonna cut this up. It's kind of nerve wracking because this is not something that's cheap, but needs to get done so that, you know, the whole system works properly. So let's get this over into the bench vise and we'll, uh, we'll start cutting or at least we'll start marking this off. All right, so over here we have the throttle body set up in the bench vise. Now we want this to remain nice and strong and tight in here, um, but we don't want to tighten it to break anything, obviously. Uh, you can see I've taped this off because we don't want any sort of metal debris. We've also taped off the intake side over here. We don't want any metal debris from this unit right here to get into the actual throttle body system because that is bad. Um, so what we're going to be doing now is taking the Dremel and we're actually going to be cutting this metal right here. Now, this is gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to take your time on. Um, like anything where you're cutting and chopping away stuff, generally speaking, you wanna chop away as little as possible and that you can get away with, so to speak. Um, and we're gonna just chop in and get as close as we can to this unit right here. But uh, what we will do is leave a little bit of room and then come back through and file it down as an alternative to continuing to cut That'll make it a little bit easier to maintain a nice smooth uh, contour here. And then what we'll do is come back through with a wire brush attachment. We're gonna clean it up nice and good. And then we're gonna come back with the final one, which is a polish. And uh, I want this to look as, as good as it possibly can uh, so that when this filter goes on there, everything, it looks you know, relatively stock. Obviously, it's not gonna be 100% stock looking. Okay, so now I have my mask on still. All right, so now that, all right, so now that we've got the main cut done, um, what I'm thinking I'll probably do now is uh, I'm gonna try and come back through and cut this down a little bit more, and then uh, I'll start shaving this down until I can uh, make these edges all look really nice and smooth. I don't want this to look jaggedy and messed up like this uh, when it goes on the car, um, but we did get the majority of this off. Now, unfortunately, my little Dremel tool, my cordless one, just could not cut, actually cutting through this. So you see I got my angle grinder out. Um, that, did, that did make quick work of the top piece of that flange, um, but you have to be extra careful. You probably saw me put some extra tape on here. You have to be extra careful not to damage the face of this EFI system because this is gonna be the top side and it's gonna be very visible to anyone who's looking at your car. So next up, let's go ahead and see how well this little grinding side does. If it doesn't do so well, then we'll have to bring the angle grinder back out, start grinding it down that way. So let's give it a shot. So that is looking really, 
really good. Um, if I do say so myself, I'm actually quite proud of that. Uh, the curve is pretty much in line with the top of the whole EFI system. Um, the only thing that we need to do now is blow this out. We don't, uh, we don't want any sort of debris left over, um, so we do need to blow that out. The only small nick I made is right there on the side of the flange here, but thankfully the filter or whatever big um, air, air cleaner is going to go on top there, which is good. Um, but let's take this off. Only one small nick there. I can probably tidy that up with just a little Sharpie or something so it doesn't stand out. So to give you a better idea of the way that this is going to go on here, let's grab this air cleaner. This air cleaner goes on just like that. So I guess it does still show that a little bit. That's unfortunate. But long term, I'm going to have a big air cleaner that comes off the end of this and goes up to the front of the car. So shouldn't be too bad. Now, next step is to get the throttle linkage off. So we're going to rotate this on its side here. Now for this stage, what we're going to be doing is getting this small throttle linkage off of this whole unit here. Um, now in order to do that, there's a little bent over tab right here. We're going to completely grind that sucker down and then uh, this throttle link, it should be able to get wiggled off of this whole unit. Um, now you can also see that I added a little bit more uh, um, fabric here and this is just so that uh, I can try and do my best to keep as much of the dust off of this thing. Um, one thing that I didn't mention at the beginning is a good dust mask. Um, this is an RZ mask, I'm a big fan of them. This is going to help keep that dust from getting into your throat. Okay, all right, and so there you have it. The throttle linkage here is totally free and uh, ready for modification, um, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. Now you saw it was a little finicky to get that off. So once this whole unit is presumably installed, um, they mushroom over the end of this. Um, and, then when you, and then when you grind it away, you're left with just the top end of this whole throttle shaft here. And the result of that is a really, really tight factory fit, which is great. But in our case, we don't want or need that throttle linkage. We have our own. So that's out of the way. Let's move on. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do to this throttle linkage is uh, build it to accept this new adjusted throttle linkage that came with the uh, Holly kit. Now you can see there's a small grub screw here and that is used to locate this against the flat surface on this throttle spindle. So you can see it's only flat up at the top here. So we're going to need to grind a flat down on this side of the throttle spindle in line with the existing one. And then we're going to bring this end of the throttle spindle down so it's just proud of this piece right here. So like I did before, I am going to add a little bit of tape to that just so I don't end up marring it, anything like that, because I want this to look nice. And so now I'm hoping my little, uh, little die grinder here is going to be enough for this job. All right, so now that we have the little piece of the throttle spindle shaved off the end here, that is gone. The next step is to slide this whole uh, throttle linkage down on top, and you're gonna wanna tighten it up there like so. And you'll see I've got a little grub screw here. Now I've added a little Sharpie line on the end of this, so I know just how far down that flat needs to be ground down. So that flat actually needs to go down so that this can locate against the flat and then of course, and then of course we'll tighten this down and this will get held in place and it'll actually actuate the, the throttle. 
Um, pretty cool stuff. It's not super complex, which is pretty cool. Um, just a little bit of modification. All right, so looking at this here, you can see this is now turning that throttle spindle, which is great. And then of course, my Dremel had to die while I was working on this. So I had to take the drill, I had to run to Home Depot and get a new Dremel. But you guys can see here, throttle is working great. And now we're gonna screw in our idle adjustment. Screw. And this is something else that we're probably going to have to um, we're going to have to adjust because, as you can see, the spring is it's loose in here, and that spring needs to be tight um, in here so that the idle adjustment doesn't get out of whack or anything. But you can see, general principle is you increase your idle by screwing out the screw, reduce your idle by screwing in the screw. Pretty straightforward stuff. One thing I do want to mention that I've noticed here while I was doing this is that this flat right here doesn't necessarily need to be like halfway through. I didn't get it quite halfway, but when you're doing this, um, you don't have to take a lot off, just enough to create a flat surface for this to actually click onto. Now it does look like it's sticking, um, but it's actually just the, the actual um, tape that I have covering the throttle uh, entry points and exit. Um, to keep the dust out, so don't worry, it's not sticking. Um, but we do need to, like I said, trim this down just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do that off screen here because it's pretty straightforward. You just chop off a little bit of the bottom of the screw. Okay, so that's gonna be the last thing I'm gonna cover in this episode. There was a lot of cutting, a lot of grinding and stuff, um, but it covers all of the major things that we need to modify on this EFI or this uh, throttle body here. Um, there is one more thing we need to modify right around here for this uh, um, extra port that is allowing air in. Um, when you when you put this filter on here, it doesn't actually cover up that hole um, and we need to make sure it's perfectly sealed. Um, this is part of the whole modification that Stuart does on these EFIs when they come all the way from his shop. Um, but uh, it is something that I'm gonna tackle in an upcoming episode. Um, but for right now, as you can see, as you can see, this is a pretty good idea of what the EFI is gonna look like. So this is gonna be sitting on the left side of the engine Air is gonna be coming in, getting processed, I'm gonna call it by the EFI, injected into the actual supercharger. Supercharger compresses that air and sends it out this intake manifold directly into the engine that's gonna be sitting right here. Pretty exciting stuff. But yeah, this thing is really starting to come together, um, at least the, the top end of the engine is. Um, the bottom end is still, it's got some work. I'm gonna be popping out the core plugs in that and I'm gonna be sending that to the machine shop here pretty soon. Um, all I have to do is wait for the crank assembly that's gonna be fin getting finished up here probably, I would say late next week and then in the mail to me. Um, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, if you have any questions about what we did on the CFI here, please let me know. Um, but uh, I think that it was all pretty straightforward. 
I, I want to go deeper into the way that EFI works. Um, if you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, I don't want to get super detailed if you guys just don't really care about it. Um, but if you do want to know how the air is mixed and injected with fuel, all that stuff, it's all happening right here. Um, you know, I'll go into that. But I want to say thank you so much to all my patrons. A huge shout out to anyone who supports me financially on this channel. Um, it really makes a huge difference. And I'm also really excited to share that we have updated the live chat portion of Patreon. So if you are a patron on the channel, you do get access to a live chat that is direct access to talk to me and ask any questions you might have. That has recently been updated from Discord, which is a chat system kind of focused on video games to something called Slack. If you guys use it for work, you might be aware of it. Um, but huge update. It makes it a lot easier for me to answer questions for you guys. And if you're interested in getting access to that channel, connecting up with all the other folks who think that this channel's content is really cool and also have minis and have questions, um, head to the link in my description and consider supporting financially. Any amount is a huge help. So with that, that is going to wrap up the last episode of December. I'm heading out to Italy in about two weeks and I'm going to be out of pocket for that period of time. And then I probably won't be getting back to mini stuff um, until after the new year. But I will be making an Italy video probably with my wife. Um, we got this brand new GoPro. Really excited about using this on our trip. Um, that's going to make video, you know, really awesome. Um, but until I see you guys on the next episode, Thank you so much for watching and enjoy those minis and motor on.